What is up guys, Winter Kills here. Wanted to make uh, an interesting video. I've never made a video like this before, but um, I felt like I have uh, been testing enough and going through so many builds and looking over so many aspects of this deck and I've been playing it for so long. Um, I don't claim to be the best at this deck. That's definitely 100% not true, um, but Basically, this is just going to be a guide or an in-depth guide of basically Mermails uh, in the state that they are here in the May 2018 format. Basically, what I'm going to be going over is the, the, the basically the core of the build, the extra deck stuff, engines that you can run, spell trap ratios, you know, Sekka's Light versus no Sekka's Light, that kind of debate. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to go ahead and do, and this video is going to be broken up by sections. And uh, in the description, I should have timestamps or something or in the comment section of what those sections are. Um, I'll list pros and cons of each things. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started with the core build. So for the core of Mermails, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I understand that the core build that I lay out might not be everybody's core build, but for most things that we talk about in this video, in general, uh, it's sort of, you know, the standard, I guess, if you will. Uh, and basically, three Teus, uh, always a part of every core of any Mermail build I've ever seen. He's easily one of the best cards. Can't search him yet. You know, Abyssalacia isn't confirmed, which is kind of heartbreaking, but it is what it is. Um, so, of course, we play our, our six uh, level sevens. I know some builds I've definitely seen running only two Megalos. That's completely understandable, but this is your core boss monster lineup. This is what's going to fuel your engine. As we know, this deck thrives on discards. Whether you're playing any other engines, uh, especially like the Frog engine or the Nimble engine, or just the Atlantean engine that we're running with this build as well, and the Mermels and Atlanteans are all included into this core, uh, main core that's going to be run in pretty much any build, no matter what one you find. Um, you're always going to see uh, the Mermel and Landing cores, and especially these guys in any numbers. Uh, so we have our level 7s, and then we move into our uh, our other Mermels. And for me personally, it's Dine and Gund. Uh, always the one of Dine, but I've been experimenting back and forth between one gun or two gun, and not running Pike or Turge. Because with other engines that I've been playing, it's just not worth the time to take up a normal summon with a card like Pike or Turge. Of course, Gun has always been one of the deck's most powerful cards since the deck has come into fruition so many years ago. And it's definitely a card that you have to play at one or two. Um, I wouldn't recommend three as it can brick and it's of course only a once per turn effect. But... Uh, definitely a card you want to take advantage of. And then, of course, Dine and Gun combo so well together. And I personally think Dine should be in pretty much every build, no matter what other engines you're running. The fact that you can basically summon a Megalo, ditching Gund and these two, and then Gun revives Dine, and then Dine revives Gund. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand with each other. And these can be used to make a rank three uh, if you really wanted to. Uh, but in most cases, they can help with synchro plays if Diva's already on field, or of course, link plays, especially if you're playing those fancy nightmare monsters. But uh, as it stands, those are the core Mermails. Of course, we see Pike, Mander, Turge, uh, Lind even still, but we will go into those in the, uh, in the engine section of this video, which we'll talk about the plus Mermails uh, that you can also run into the deck if you want to play it in a different uh, play style than what I currently have listed. So now we're going to go into the Atlanteans, uh, which could be arguably the, the, the better part of the engine. Uh, of course, we have Triple Prince. This is non-explainable, really. This is just the the card that breathed new life for this deck. And, of course, it's a three of in any build, no matter where you are. And then with Triple Atlantean Dragoons, it's even better because this card is just the nuts. Not once per turn, search as many times as you can, and of course you're going to be going for your Megalos, your Divas, your Moulin Glacias, your other removal cards like uh, Infantry and Marksman. Of course this card is a staple as well. Uh, and then we have two copies of Infantry and one Marksman. We see ratio of these vary from 3 to none, 2 to 2, 
or two to one like I have here. Of course, those can change uh, depending on build. So we have our Mermel and Atlantean engine. And then of course, there are two other water monsters that must be run in the deck. Uh, although I've seen some builds move away from the Mooling Glacias, sometimes you do have to center your plays around it. But the opportunity to be able to get a free 2800 monster on board or possibly 33 uh, with a Dweller and or Mastar Boy is just too good to pass up, making your opponent start with four cards, etc., etc. And the Deep Sea Diva, uh, these two cards go hand in hand in pretty much any core build of Atlantean Mermail. And then personally, this is something I think should also be in, in the main core is Triple Aqua Spirit. Rank 4s are very important, especially ones like Abyss Dweller that can be detached first turn, no matter if you don't have, you know, the, the two zones pointing down to go into the Bahamut Toad play, which is slightly less good now that we're in Master Rule 4. Um, but again, this could probably be out of the, the core build of Atlantean and Mermails. Um, I would just include them because I think Aqua Spirit's just a great card in general. So that in of itself is the core build. Uh, from my perspective. And now we're going to go in and talk about spells and traps, Sekka versus no Sekka, etc, etc. Okay, so now we are into the spell and trap section of this video. And as far as draw power, Mermail is a deck that, in my opinion, has always lacked a little bit of consistency, especially with powerful cards like Diva being at one, the loss of the Instant Fusion Norden play, Draw power has always been something very important and something this deck has relied on for quite some time. And when it comes to draw power in the main deck, I would like to think that this is the trifecta of draw power utility. Uh, I could also include Upstart Goblin in here as well. Um, don't have that card right now? Where the hell is it? So yes, can't forget the Upstart Goblin as well. So just wanted to point that out and make it uh, present here in the video. Basically, most of these decisions are completely opinion-based. And honestly, in testing, I've found little evidence for each pick as to why one would be superior over the other two. So that's why we're going to go ahead and list over the pros and cons of these draw power engines. And first we'll start with Sekka's Light, since this is the newest card, and one of the cards bringing up a lot of discussion around the deck currently, uh, at least in my opinion. So Sekka's Light, as we know, when you run this card, you can only play these three spells in the deck. You cannot run any traps, no other spells. This is the only spell you're running, and you better hope that you can see it a few times in that game because I'll be honest resolving two of these in a game helping it fix dead hands is definitely this card's best attribute because if you can resolve this card at least two times in a game you're most certainly in a very very good position depending on of course what your opponent has to say about it and like I said another pro about this card is that it does have the ability that raw sheer ability no matter what is in your hand to help draw you into more combo pieces or to recycle cards you don't need currently or to fix bad hands, I guess is the way I could put that as well. For instance, a card like this could thrive with the Undyne engine or even the Destrudo and Mare Mare engine because this card has the ability not only to draw into those combo pieces and combo starters, for example, Destrudo, uh, Swap Frog, or Undyne, or even Neptibus or Teus, but it also has the ability to put back the Garnets, if you will, that go along with each of those engines. What do I mean by this? Of course, opening up the controller, which is something I do a lot. It seems to have a magnet, and it just sticks to my hand. So when I'm able to, you know, have the Undyne in hand with the controller, I'm able to play my Sekka's Light, of course, if I open the card, draw into two more combo pieces, luckily, and recycle that controller back into the deck, allowing me to draw an additional card. Pray to God you don't draw back into the controller. It's one of the, you know, timeless things of the past where a card like uh, Metal Foes Fusion, you could shuffle back into the deck, and there's always that possibility. I don't know what the mathematics are in it, but you could, of course, redraw into that Metal Foes Fusion, which, of course, is pretty unlucky. But 
Like I said, this card has the sheer ability to be played no matter what the circumstances. So long as you're using the banish effect regularly so you don't draw into one and then have one engraved still, which is a mistake that can be made. Um, so this card can always be live because of course you cannot activate this card if there is a spell or trap already in your grave. Um, and of course if you're top decking this, have no other monsters in hand, then you're kind of screwed and you just made this card dead, which is very, very hard to do. But the cons of this card, we'll go ahead and talk about the cons. And now it's pretty inherent already what the con is, and it's the fact that you cannot play other spells and traps in your deck. Now, Mermails being the deck that it is in this state is a very spam deck that has the potential to pop off extremely hard when given the chance. Now, a card like this, like I said, allows to not play uh, other power cards in the deck, and those power cards exist along the lines of uh, Soul Charge, of course, the Mizuchi card, which is very, very good for the deck, as it allows, you know, to... Be able to get that spell negate, make your Megalo very, very powerful. 3200 is an attack to be reckoned with. Of course, the Dark Hole and Raigeki, because some builds do like to OTK, and of course, Dark Hole and Raigeki are at the pinnacle of those cards uh, that allow the deck to OTK like it does. The Abyss Sphere, which is something I've been looking into and out of for the past couple of weeks, is it allows you to create a nice bit of disruption, and it is searchable which is also very nice when, when talking about uh, Disruption, of course. And then another card I'll go ahead and pull out is a card called Instant Fusion, uh, which if I could find it really quick. Um, yeah, Instant Fusion, of course, being another power card that can be played in the deck as well if you do not run the Sekka build. One for one, another example, and of course, who could forget Monster Reborn? Being some of those cards that you'll have to pass up uh, in order to play the Sekka's Light. Um, and Sekka's Light has that extreme chance to help you pop off, draw into all your combo pieces, and recycle the cards you don't need. And in most cases, it's never dead like a Moray of Greed could be. Maybe you don't have the waters in hand you need to fuel the Moray of Greed, and then you just kind of have that dead card in your hand. Um, but with this, you do have to, of course, give up all these other cards. And then it affects the side deck as well. Uh, some builds I know do side in all monsters, Zafion, Valors, um, you know, Danko, Sekka, if you will, Ash Blossom, Drone Lock Bird, you name it. Just siding extremely monster heavy builds, or you could side in cards like Moray of Greed um, to side these out with, side in more spells and traps like Red Reboot, Called by the Grave, etc., etc. Um, but yeah, that, in my opinion, is the pros and cons of Sekka's Light, um, and I'll go ahead and give my personal opinion of what I think is better currently once we get through this section of the video. Now, of course, the other cards that I had pointed out for draw power was, of course, the Moray of Greed, and the pros of this cards, uh, of course, is pretty much just the opposite of what I stated earlier, just allowing you to have access to these other power cards that you normally play in a standard build before this card uh, before Sekka's Light ever had come out. Um, it just gives you access to really powerful, sacky cards. Um, you know, like Monster Reborn, Soul Charge, Raigeki. Of course, the Instant Fusion plays are one-for-ones, which add for plenty of consistency. And the nice thing about Moray of Greed over Sekka's Light is that this card can be activated more than once per turn and can be activated no matter what is in your grave, so long as you have the two waters in hand to use. Now, this card I have had used several times in a turn to just dig and dig and mulligan and recycle cards back into the deck and it just allows you to get there and what do i mean by that get there to those combo pieces that you just really really want to see and that's pretty much all there really is to say about this card you know you don't have to worry about you know only playing one a turn and better hope you draw good if you open up one draw and then use one and you draw into three more cards and I don't know how many times I can't even count how many times I've drawn into another moray with plenty of targets to use this card is very good at fixing dead hands and drawing into of course more combo pieces and digging to the cards you want to see now of course the downside of this card is it does have that activation requirement similar to Sekka's Light but this card is a bit less forgiving in terms of that what do I mean by that? Of course you need the two waters in hand to even use this card. 
and sometimes in the deck we play hand traps we could be playing the destrudo engine which of course destrudo is a dark monster and of course we have hand traps like ash blossom drone lockbird effect valor ghost ogre and all of those monsters fitting under the realm of things that are not water. Therefore, they are not usable with this card. And who could forget the infamous Gen X controller, who he himself could not be used with this card. And that, my friends, is where I think the biggest issue with this card lies. But to be honest, in my past week or two of testing on stream, that is my least of worries that I have with this card, is not having the requirements needed. Since most of the time, a um, large majority of your deck is water monsters and uh, the, the fear of drawing into, of course, uh, you know, non-water monsters to use this card. Opening non-water monsters in the first place is very low, but it is still a threat that is very much there. Now, the last draw power cards we have to talk about, of course, is Pot of Desires. Um, and uh, we'll talk about Upstart for a second. Of course, this card could be played with the Moray engine as well as the Upstart engine, or the Desires engine, because you're not playing Sekka's Light. So this is an added card that could potentially go with any 40-card build of Mermails that do not run Sekka's Light. Now, Desires is very good in its own right because it does a couple of things for the deck. Now, when Desires first came out, I, like many others, was very skeptical of this card. And what do I mean by that? Of course, banishing 10 in a combo-oriented deck where the possibility of banishing Megalos, Dragoons, and Princes, and Divas absolutely terrified me like it did many others. Now, the good thing about this card that some people didn't really realize at the time, myself included, was the fact that it's all about the timing with this card. You do not just want to start your turn in Desires if your hand is already decent. There's just no need to do that. If your hand is good and you have the Desires in hand, you're better off just holding on to it, going through your Prince play with Teus, maybe into Dragoon, search your Mulan, and then afterwards Desires to help draw into cards to help you win harder or to help crack that board you're trying to break into. And in the end, if you do open up Terrible... With this card in hand, and you do end up drawing into the cards that you really need, it's a win-win, but if you don't draw into the cards you need and you banished things that you needed, it's best to think of it that you were probably going to lose that game anyways, so you were able to do all that you could do, but in the end of the day, banishing your combo pieces, regardless of how good your hand is, is never good in my opinion. The fact that you could lose a game by like saying, oh... My last Prince is banished, my last Megalo that I need to OTK is banished, or my Gamma Seals that I needed are banished and now I can't win is just a really sour way, a bitter way to say, you know, let's go game two or you potentially lose the match because of that. So that is why I personally don't like Desires. And overall, the winner for this category as far as draw power is concerned for me is going to have to be Moray of Greed. Okay, so now we are on to the third section of this video, which is going to be talking about more main deck choices because, of course, with the core build and the spells and traps we have talked about earlier, we're still not really at 40 cards for the most part. And that's where we talk about the engine choices, which, in my opinion, is what makes Mermels one of the most unique decks of the format and in some cases one of the hardest to pilot because oftentimes in an opening hand there is just so many plays that could be made and it isn't always clear in which is the correct play. So what are these engines and uh, how do they work essentially? So the first engine of course is the Destrudo and Mare Mare engine uh, which oftentimes is seen run with the Undyne engine specifically because it ha gives you access to more level 3s, which of course makes the Destrudo very, very good. Now, I know I don't have a third Destrudo here. Uh, that's not because I believe the Destrudo engine should be run with 2. It could be. Uh, I just don't have my third Destrudo. And the extra deck monster that correlates with this mainly is going to be Yazzie, Evil of the Yang Zing, which I do not have a copy of currently. So for the time being, I'll just use this poorly printed out proxy. Uh, so basically, 
I'll go ahead and give the rundown and how the combo necessarily works for each one of these given engines. So, for example, with the Destrudo engine with these cards available, the way it's going to work is that you normally want to have Gen X Undyne as your extra or your main normal summon, or perhaps your extra normal summon if you're able to go through the nightmare combos. And then you're going to use Destrudo's effect to, of course, target Undyne, make him a level 4, and then you're going to Synchro away for Yazi. Keep in mind, this combo is really, really, really potent when going second, not so much going first, and is rather underwhelming. Um, so you make your Yazi, you use his Scrap Dragon effect to target himself and another monster your opponent controls, destroy them both, and then you're going to use Yazi's effect to special summon a Worm from deck. And who is that going to be? None other than Mare Mare. He will come out in defense position, and then Mare Mare has the ability to special summon up to three tokens per turn. They are all water, and for every token that he summons, he loses an additional level. So you could have the chance on a single turn to bring him down to level four. Now, what does this allow for? Well, of course, the the the, the possibilities are really endless. Mare Mare being a tuner, of course, there are synchro plays that come up. There are link plays that come up. And that's pretty much about it. No real Ixies plays being made. I mean, I guess the fact that you could bring him down to a level 4 with Aqua Spirit could mean a free Dweller, the Starboy. Um, that could be a, a combo as well. But you can end double the Starboy, the bare minimum, without talking about any Nightmare combos. Bare minimum, using the two to the two tokens to make a, a Starboy, and then using the Mare Mare and two tokens to make a Starboy. That's an extra... A thousand damage to all of your water monsters, which is extremely potent. Uh, so, in a nutshell, that's basically what the Destrudo engine is basically for, and uh, one of the viable engines that is uh, playable in Mermails currently this format. Now, what is the other engine? Uh, probably one of the most popular engines to run is the uh, Undyne engine with the controller and the Christian Rosenix. Um, the reason I'm adding the Rosenix is uh, is because it's a main stay, at least that I've seen, for uh, most of the combos that come out of this this engine. So of course, as you know, basically the way the Undyne engine works is that you're gonna use Undyne as your extra normal or your main normal summon to send Christron Rosenix to the grave. You'll banish him to summon a token, use the token to go into Link Spider, and of course you'll add this pesky controller to your hand. And then use Link Spider to summon this. And then you'll want to go into Cerberus. Or if you don't have the resources, you could go into Nightmare Goblin. Discard a card. And then extra normal, preferably for a card like Prince or uh, Diva. Which, uh, where are they? Extra normal summon for a card either like Prince or Diva to, of course, make more power plays. And why do I say if you have the resources? So I'll go ahead and give the perfect example how this play would work out. Basically, just opening up these cards, this could be uh, this as well, but for consistency's sake, this would be the ultimate combo. And this combo, in my opinion, is best going second because you can truly abuse the nightmares. It could also be used going first uh, to set up unbreakable boards, locks, if you're playing Nightmare Ibli, etc., etc. So, what the combo would look like is you summon the Undyne, like I stated, send the Rose Nyx. Banish the Rose Nyx to summon a token, and then use the token for Link Spider, who is right there. And then you would use this to summon the controller, Link here, into none other than uh, Nightmare Cerberus in this case. You would use his, or actually, we'd want to be over in this, this Link zone uh, to keep things uh, better, I guess. And then you discard get a draw, and then you'd want to summon this, banish the Undyne, use these two to link into uh, what I would say is Goblin, Ditch to draw, uh, and get your extra normal summon, which of course would be Prince, and then from there you can pop off to infinite combos. You can make this, you can make this, you can make this, that, you can make that thing, you can make that thing, that thing, you know, like I said, the, the combos, they just go on and on. Um... Like I said, best to abuse when going second because those nightmares fuel off the discards and they interact with your opponent's field 
which obviously nets you those extra draws when you get to use and activate their effects on summon. And uh, that's basically one of the main perks of the Undyne Engine. But of course, the Undyne Engine in of itself usually works best with the Sekka Engine because you can recycle cards like Rosenix. You can recycle cards like Controller, of course, being the most popular card to recycle with the deck. And uh, overall, pretty much that is all there is to say about the Undyne Engine. It does take up a normal summon, um, and it does require a lot more resources to use. So that's why, in some cases, the Nimble Engine could be better to combo with those two, because for the Nightmare cards, discarding something like an Angler is just pretty much GG at that point. Getting those two free extra monsters on board is just usually... Uh, too good, really, to pass up and uh, allows for so many extra combos. And speaking of the Nimble Engine, here it is, which consists of, for me, Triple Angler, Sunfish, and the Beaver. And uh, the really only positive thing about this engine is the ability allows you to spam. Saryuja is much more viable with this engine, the Nightmares, as well, too. But they can brick extremely hard because we play two Garnets with this build instead of just one with the Undyne. In some cases, these kind of are just worse frogs. This build, you could uh, play something like Foolish Burial to start the engine much quicker, but then you can't play cards like Sekka's Light if you decide to do so. That's something you'll just have to think about. And Moray of Greed, of course, would be much more suitable with this engine anyways because the two Garnets are waters themselves. And Beaver has a little bit of utility if you do open him and you're able to get one of these to the grave. You can just use it to reborn any of them and, of course, make more plays from there. Uh, free two monsters on board to make Mistar or any nightmare you want. Or just help to make that Saryuja to really abuse the fact to get those draw powers to fix your hands. Dig into combo pieces. Dig into cards like Soul Charge, Infuse, and One for One Regeki. If you're really pushing for a game or more combos, this engine could be very good. Personally, I've been back and forth between this engine um, and at the end of this section, of course, I'll give my opinion what I think uh, could possibly be the better engines to run currently, which engines to run with each other, etc, etc. And of course, one thing that I'll note before we move on is that the Angler engine, uh, the Nimble engine itself, works pretty well with the Undyne engine because if going for the huge link combo with the extra normal and goblin does not seem viable at the time, you could always send an Angler to, of course, uh, summon this and then summon... Or send the angler off the undyne and then summon your sunfish and your beaver with the undyne there and that allows uh for some good starting plays as well um but that's it for that engine and then the last engine that we'll talk about is the frog engine uh which is an in interesting engine in my opinion because this engine has proved time and time again to be one of the best possible engines to play in the deck alongside with any of the others really no matter how you pair them uh in most cases i've seen two of these engines mixed together three max never all of them just two usually working together or three at max like i said that's very rare but the thing about this engine opening up the frog um and the ronin is really good opening up the garnet in this case is almost never bad because he's water he's discardable um, he does something in grave, uh, like unlike the, the beaver or the sunfish, they don't, not, they don't really do anything for you in grave. The Ronin, of course, has the ability to summon self out if the swap frog there is present. Uh, the swap frogs also can discard cards like gun if you're playing multiple copies or discard some cards to the grave to set up other plays. Uh, the, the ability to bounce things back to your hand to reuse can also come up a lot. This engine is just so versatile amongst most of the other engines and is very rarely dead. And of course, it nets you totally awesome, which in of itself is a good card to have right now because it's just a free negate. And uh, taking uh, taking advantage of that is pretty smart, if you ask me. So uh, I think this is one of the best engines that you could possibly run. The, the utility it has, the likelihood of it breaking is very low. It's pretty much always live, and then totally awesome, of course, is one of those benefits. And then this guy adds you back stuff as well. Uh, so, very, very good engine. And in my opinion, before we move on uh, to the, the last engine uh, that I want to talk about, actually, before we even move on to the next section, we still have to talk another engine, which is the, the Mermel's Plus engine, uh, which I guess could be considered an engine. 
So when I talk about the Mermel Plus engine, what do I really mean by that? I mean just additional Mermels to run to perhaps cut out another engine in the deck and maybe just play one at max. Uh, in cards like this could consist of, I don't have my Turge pulled out right now, but, uh, oh, here he is. Here's Turge. We don't want to forget about you. Uh, so you just basically run these extra Mermels into the deck and take advantage of their own unique abilities and things that they can set up. Of course, the uh, Lind and the Spear, or just playing the Spear in of itself to set up for discard interruptions. But then you will need to play cards like Pike and Turge to trigger the discards of cards like Infantry and Marksman, um, because there are some combos that I've seen that rely on ending with the set Spear to be able to use during the turn to summon out the Turge or the Pike to attempt to activate their effect, still discard for cost the infantry, and trigger the effect. Of course, the Turge and Pike will not activate because uh, Sphere is negating them for the time being. Uh, you still get that discard, the destruction, which in most cases is very good. Um, so I guess that's talking about these guys here. We'll move these out of the way, and those, their utilities. Uh, and of course, the Lind End Phase to Summon is very good as well. It's always been pretty decent, sometimes a little slow though. That's why it's in and out of builds. Uh, that we see quite a bit. The Mizuchi uh, is a card that goes in with the Mermail Plus engine, of course, if you decide not to play Sekka because you can't play this with Sekka. Uh, it's just pretty much common sense there. Um, and sometimes could be played with the, uh, the Sphere because getting those double searches off of a Megalo Summon and a Megalo Summon to be able to grab your scale for spell negation for the attack increase and grab the Sphere as well and especially some combos that end with Nightmare Griffin can reset the sphere to use again, which is super cool. Uh, but I digress. Moving on, we have the Osea play, which with uh, cards like Aqua Spirit can set up cool rank 4s and link plays as well. Hild combos pretty well with Dine. It summons a Mermel from your hand, but sometimes I found it to be quite underwhelming. Abyss Mander is great because it does allow for some really cool extra deck plays and uh, helps the deck out going first quite a bit. And some of those extra deck cards, if I could go ahead and pull them out here... Uh, consists of Calamities and uh, the Rank 8, Number 38, Hope Harbinger, both offering their own benefits, um, depending on really how you want to play. And, of course, the Secondary Gun, which could be just thrown in with the main core build or played with this extra engine to, you know, help revive any of these other extra Mermels that you might decide to play. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for the engines. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think the Destrudo engine uh, is one of the best at least some people have been saying that uh, I think the undying engine and the frog engine are probably my two favorites if I had to choose uh, with the the uh, Destrudo engine coming in like a close second or a third I should say but I do like both of these engines I think they're very good and I think they allow for the most power plays going first or second uh, so that is just my opinion um, Although, I've been testing builds running just the Frog Engine and no Undyne Engine. That's an Aqua Spirit. But, uh, yeah, I think these are some of the best. The Nimble Engine's okay. Uh, but after, you know, using that first effect to get the, the two monsters out on board, it's pretty much useless for the rest of the game because you've exhausted your resources. And I think these guys give you the most bang for your buck. Undynes act like extra princes in some cases if you decide not to go for the combo. And, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, that is it for the engine part of the video. We'll go ahead and talk about extra deck. Okay, and so for this format, when talking about extra deck, when regarding the, the Mermel uh, builds, who could forget and uh, how could we not talk about the Nightmare engine? This engine has been such a flip-flopped thing for me sometimes. I found myself wanting to dedicate fully to it sometimes for the power that it offers, other times not, and I just wanted to play the minimalist build, you know, in the extra deck, which is running the Phoenix and Cerberus for the utilities they can offer, the removal, the occasional draw if you set it up right, um, but sometimes this build uh, with this engine in the extra deck does allow for some pretty cool first turn lockdowns if you do play the Nightmare Ibley in the extra deck are in the main deck, and there are some combos that involve the Mermaid, which I on basically Mermaid, Firewall, and Nightmare Griffin. Um, basically, this extra deck uh, lineup here has some very good traits to it, like I said, but it does basically make you run this certain Link-heavy playstyle, 
which in some cases you might find yourself missing the synchros and ICSIs that you had access, access to prior or instant fusion targets. Like I said, if you decide to play instant fusions in a non seca build, but uh, this, this engine, in most cases, I found myself just running these four because they do offer the most utility, but adding these in could also add in some, of course, extra really good first turn lockdowns, but you do have to sort of change up the, the main deck build as well to run the Ibli, which in itself is a Garnet. You don't really want to open that, but you can take advantage of the Mermaid to summon out the Ibli from extra deck, and of course, it's a water, so that can trigger effects as well. And then the Nightmare Griffin is very powerful on its own. Um, of course, the effect that uh, special summon monsters on the field cannot activate their effects unless they are linked. So, very, very powerful, very good to have, and uh, they offer their own utilities and own benefits. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on and talk about other stuff in the extra deck. Oh, and another thing to add, of course, this will be seen in extra decks that have a lot of links. And like I said, you might find yourself missing out on the fusions, Ixies, and Sinkers that you play otherwise. All right, so these are some of the Ixies that I was referring to. Nightmare builds that I have seen uh, do run the Bahamut Toad and, of course, the Tomahawk. But that's really it because the Galaxy Tomahawk in this deck is just stupid sometimes. Summoning out four or five tokens for free is just, like, too much. And I could see this card uh, getting hit possibly in the future because of that fact, but... Hopefully not. It's it's a decent card. Just because Master Rule 4 made tokens good. I don't know. That's a different story for a different time. But of course, running the Heavy Link extra deck to rely on all those Nightmare plays that could be fragile at times. Uh, these are mostly the three Ixies that you are going to play, which force you to have to sometimes give up these. Uh, granted, these could be played if you do play the Mander, so we won't really include those. But cards like Dweller, Gaios, Flare Metal, all very, very good cards. And of course, who could forget some of the Synchros that you would have to cut as well. And I'll go ahead and list some of those. Uh, the Black Rose Dragon, very easy to make with the Destrudo engine. Of course, the level 7s that you can make. Tatsunoko and Trish. Uh, Coral Dragon, as well as the White Aura Whale, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to play a build that, you know, had synchro capability is because white or whale and coral dragon work so well together this card has won me several games clearing bore loads off the field helping otk and the fact that it just keeps coming back and coming back as a 2800 body your opponent has to deal with that doesn't go to the main, the extra monster zone is super nice and then of course are the other ice barrier synchros that you could play like gungnir and Bryanak. uh so you do have to worry about giving these up at some point too and I re the reason I like playing the lower link extra deck with some of the Nightmares is because I still have access to these, which in their own right are very powerful cards that do help you win games. Um, so that is pretty much it for the Synchros and Xyz. And then the last thing I'll cover are just other links that can be played in the deck as well as Fusions. Uh, I don't have a, a Rare Fish, but Rare Fish, of course, could be included. Thousand Eyes Restrict and, of course, the Monster of Theseus to set up links. Xyz, Synchros, you name it. Okay, so for some links that basically just go within a generic build, Underclock Taker, Decode Talker, Mistar Boy, Borlo Dragon, uh, and then the rest here, Trigate Wizard, Firewall, Proxy, Saryuja, Link Karibo, all very good cards that, in depending on what you're running, uh, some builds, you know, if you're not playing Link Heavy, you're just mainly sticking with the Borlo, the maybe Double Mistar, and maybe Decode, uh, I know some Link Heavy Nightmare Extra decks do play the Decode and the Underclock, as well as Trigate and Firewall, and Proxy Dragon, uh, Saryuja at some point as well. And these guys, of course, all vary in and out, depending on what kind of build you're playing. Uh, Link Spider as well, of course, has to be mentioned in there uh, to be played with some of the Nightmare Engines, because uh, he does set up that play, of course, with Undyne, as we mentioned earlier. And... Uh, yeah, all very viable options to play in the extra deck. And uh, that is pretty much it uh, for this in-depth video, this in-depth look at Mermail in May 2018. Uh, so basically, the current build that I'm running uh, on YGO Pro, and I'm just going to pull up my build here just so I have it to look at. Right now, I think I'm running... The the Destrudo engine with the the Destrudo engine with the Undyne engine, 
but I've also had plenty of reason to play just the frog engine and uh, run a little more spells and traps in the deck. Uh, but I kind of really like the Undyne engine uh, with the swap engine. It's just, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I want to get your opinion. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, that's awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think is the best engines to run, the best way to run the deck. Um, I've been experimenting with a lot of engines, getting a lot of feedback. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's probably pretty long. It's, I've been doing this video for about an hour, and uh, my voice is kind of shot. But that was our in-depth look at Mermails. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope I was able to help you out with some stuff. And I uh, hope you decide on your own. But anyways, Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you in the next one.